subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello friends, this is Santanam from Officers IAS Academy. And in this video, we are going to solve the previous year's UPSC question for history. But history can be divided into ancient, medieval, modern, art and culture. So there are many parts uh, that we can uh, talk about in history. So in this video, we are going to pick only the questions related to ancient India that has been asked in UPSC, Civil Services Exams Prelims, from 2015 till this year, 2019. So we are going to take these five years of questions, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. And we will solve all the questions related to ancient India. So we will solve these questions and by solving these questions, what are we trying to accomplish? We want to know what kind of questions are asked in ancient Indian history. And we also would like to know how to actually approach these questions when asked how to reason, how to rationalize the thoughts that we have with regards to approaching these questions. So that's what we're going to do in uh, today's video. We will start with the very first question, which is, which of the following kingdoms were associated with the life of the Buddha, meaning Gautama Buddha, Avanti, Gandhara, Koshala, Magadha. So you have four options here. And of these four options, we should know whether Buddha's life is associated with any one or more of these options. Well, for starters, we first know for a fact that it is associated with Magadha. We know that for a fact. Because it is in and around Magadha that Buddha traveled the most. It is also associated with Kosala. That also we know because we find that there are many evidences of Buddha having been present in Kosala himself and the king of Kosala himself being someone who liked and patronized Buddha even during his own lifetime. So Kosala is also there. So 3 and 4 has to be in the options which means A is not the answer, B is not the answer, it could be either C or D. Between C and D all we need to know is whether one Avanti is something that is associated with Buddha or not. Well, here it is a little confusing because there are historical evidences which say that the king of Avanti invited Buddha to his court. So, which means that obviously there is some association with Buddhism and Avanti. But here the question is life of the Buddha himself. So, if you are going to talk about the Buddha himself, did Buddha himself associate with Avanti? The answer is no, because Buddha was quite old at that time and he did not want to go and visit Avanti because of his own physical illness and physical deformities. So therefore, Avanti is not associated with the life of the Buddha directly, even though Avanti is influenced by Buddhism. In which case, one cannot be the answer. So the answer is option D, 3 and 4 only. If you want to look at the life of Buddha being associated with Gandhara, the answer is outright no, because Gandhara is in the northwestern frontier, Magadha is in the east. So for Buddha to, tra to have traveled from east to the northwest, it's going to have taken a lot of time and there are no evidences of Buddha ever visiting that part of the country. So the probability of Buddha having visited Gandhara is pretty much low and therefore we can safely eliminate Gandhara also. So the answer to this question is option D, 3 and 4 only. Next question. Which one of the following books of ancient India has the love story of the son of the founder of Shunga dynasty. So here there are four books listed here or four historical works listed here, ancient Indian works. Of these four, which has the love story of the son of the founder of Gupta, uh, Shunga dynasty? Shunga dynasty, the founder is Pushyamitra Shunga. He is the founder. And the son of Pushyamitra Shunga is Agnimitra. So here, if you look at the options, the first one says 
Swapnaswadatta. Then you have Malavika Agnimitra. Then you have Meghaduta. And option D, Ratnavali. So obviously, the son of Shunga dynasty is Agnimitra. His name is Agnimitra. The chunk of Pushamitra Shunga. So the answer is option B. Outright, it is correct. Meghaduta is written by Kalidasa. Swapnaswadatta is written by Bhasha. Ratnavali is attributed to King Harshavardhana. So, the answer is obviously option B, Malavika Agnimitra. Then, in the context of history of India, consider the following pairs. Yeri Patti, land, re land revenue from which was set apart for the maintenance of village tanks. Tanyur, village donated to a single Brahmin or a group of Brahmins. Then Gatikas, colleges generally attached to the temples. So, you have three pairs here. You should try to understand which is correctly matched. What is correctly matched here? Yeri Patti. What is this Yeri Patti? Yeri Patti is in fact a land and that land is allocated so that whatever revenue that comes from that land is used for the maintenance of Yeri, meaning reservoirs, irrigation reservoirs, lakes, ponds, whatever it could be. So, the first pair is correct. Second, Tanyur. Villages donated to a single Brahmin or a group of Brahmins. That is wrong because the villages donated to a single Brahmin or a group of Brahmins is called as Brahmadeya. It is not called as Tanyur. Tanyur is nothing but a, it's an administrative unit under, under the Cholas. That's all. That is Tanyur. Three, Gatika. Colleges generally attached to the temples and that is correct. Ghatikas are colleges, places of learning attached along with temples. So, 1 and 3 are correct, 2 is wrong. The answer is option D, 1 and 3 only. Next question. With reference to the cultural history of India, memorizing the memorizing of chronicles, dynastic histories, epic tales was the profession of who among the following? Shramana, Parivraj, Parivrajaka, Araha, Agraharika, Magadha. Of these four, the answer is actually Magadha. So, how would you answer these kinds of questions? To be honest, there is no shortcut here. Sometimes you just have to know the hard fact. So, Magadha is the one culture where there is memorizing of chronicles, there is memorizing of epics, there is memorizing of tales and all of that. That's, that culture is the profession of, that, cul that culture is the practice of this Magadha people. So, this is the answer for the fourth question. The answer is option D. Who of the following had first deciphered the edicts of Emperor Ashoka? So, Ashoka's edicts are written in Brahmi script. So, whoever deciphered Brahmi script would be the one who deciphered Ashoka's uh, inscriptions. It would be very simple and straightforward, James Princip. Once again, it's a factual question. Sometimes you have to know the fact. So, James Princip is the one who deciphered Brahmi uh, script and he is also the one who eventually deciphered specifically what is written in Ashokan inscriptions. He is the one who understood that the name given here for the king who gave this inscription is Piyadasi or Piyadasi, meaning the beloved of the gods, Devanam Piya Piyadasi. That's how Ashoka was described in his own inscriptions. So that's deciphered by James Prince. So that's the right answer here. With reference to the religious history of India, consider the following statements. The concept of Bodhisattva is central to Hinayana sect of Buddhism. Is that statement correct? The answer is no, it is not. Because it is not of Hinayana sect, it is of Mahayana sect of Buddhism, not Hinayana sect. Bodhisattva is a compassionate one on his way to enlightenment. Bodhisattvas are compassionate people who are in the process of achieving enlightenment. So that's Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva delays, delays achieving his or her own salvation to help all sentient beings on their path to it. And that statement is correct. The second is also correct. Because the Bodhisattva is one person who helps others attain spiritual upliftment. 
others even attain the status of Buddhahood. So that's Bodhisattva. Example, Bodhidharma, who is a Bodhisattva. Vajrapani, Padmapani, these are all examples of Bodhisattvas. So in this question, 2 and 3 are correct, 1 is wrong. The answer is option B, 2 and 3 only. Next question. With reference to the difference between the culture of Rig Vedic Aryans and Indus Valley people, which of the following statements is or are correct? First statement, Rig Vedic Aryans use the coat of mail and helmet, which is correct, in warfare, whereas the people of Indus Valley civilization did not leave any evidence of using them. This statement is correct statement because we don't find any evidence of Indus Valley people having used helmets or coats of mail, which is nothing but a bodily armor made up of hard leather and metal. Statement 2. Rig Vedic Aryans knew gold, silver and copper, whereas Indus Valley people knew only copper and iron. That statement is wrong because they did not know of iron. So second statement is wrong. Third, Rig Vedic Aryans had domesticated the horses, whereas there is no evidence of Indus Valley people having been aware of this animal. This statement is correct. It is correct because the evidence that is that are found in Indus Valley civilization, they talk about domesticated cattle being present, which included humped bulls, oxen, buffaloes, cows and all of that, goats. We even find fishes, different kinds of aquatic animals. We even find wild animals, but we do not find evidences of horse bones present in Indus Valley sites. It is not present. So therefore, this statement that Indus Valley people are not aware of this animal is correct only. So here, the answer would be 1 and 3 only, which is option C. Question number 8. With reference to the religious history of India, consider the following statements. Sautrantika and Samitya were the sects of Jainism, they say. It is not correct. It is a sect of Buddhism. Sarvastivadin held that the constituents of phenomenon were not wholly momentary but existed forever in a latent form. So Sarvastivadin, they believe that things do not exist temporarily. They are there before, they are present even now and they will exist even in the future. So this statement which says that they held that the constituents of phenomenon were not wholly momentary but existed forever in a latent form. That statement is correct. So the first statement is wrong, second is correct. The answer is option B, 2 only. Question number 9. With reference to Indian history, who among the following is a future Buddha yet to come and save the world? Who among the following? The answer is quite straightforward. It is a one, once again a factual question. The answer is option C, Maitreya. He is supposed to be the Buddha who will come once again like Gautama Buddha and relieve the humans of the worldly desires and sorrows, misery. So that's the answer option C. Maitreya is the answer for the ninth question. Tenth question. With reference to the religious practice in, the, in, in India, the Stanakvasi sect belongs to which of these religion? That's the question. It could be Buddhism, Jainism, Vaishnavism or Shaivism. The answer is Jainism, option B. Because Stanakvasi sect is actually a sub-sect of Shvetambara Jainism, Shvetambara sect of Jainism. So here they believe that idol worship is not necessary and you should rather observe all the Jaina tenets rather than go and worship the idols. So that is Stanakwasi belonging to Jainism. Question number 11. Which one of the following is not a Harappan site? Well, Chan Udaro present in Pakistan is a Harappan site. Kodji present in Pakistan is a Harappan site. Desalpur present in Gujarat is a Harappan site. The answer is Shogaura. Shogaura is a Mauryan site. It is not a Harappan site, it is a Mauryan site where we have copper plate inscriptions. So therefore, the answer is option C for question number 11. 
Question number 12. In which of the following relief sculpture inscriptions is Ranyo Ashoka, meaning King Ashoka, mentioned along with the stone portrait of Ashoka? So, once again, a factual question. The answer here is very straightforward. First of all, understand that all four sites given here, they are all of Mauryan sites only. All of these are Mauryan sites. And Kangan Halli present in the south, present in Karnataka, it is here we find the sculpture Ranyo Ashoka mentioned as Ashoka mentioned as Ranyo Ashoka along with his own stone image present here. So Sanchi is where Ashoka built a stupa. Shabar, uh, Shabasgari is also one place where Ashoka had his uh, inscriptions present and Shogaura as I discussed in the previous question is a place where you will find that there is a copper plate inscription talking about how the Mauryan administration provided for famine relief. So all four are Ashokan uh, Mauryan sites of which the answer for this question is option A, Kangan Halli. Thirteen, with reference to forced labor in India during the Gupta period, which one of the following statements is correct? Forced labor meaning Vishti, so which is correct? It is considered, it was considered a source of income for the state, a sort of tax paid by the people and that is actually correct, that is the correct answer. It was totally absent in Madhya Pradesh and Kathiawar, it says Madhya Pradesh, Central India, Kathiawar in Western India, is it, it, it was totally absent? The answer is in fact outright no, because here is where we find lots of mentioning of Vishti. Forced laborer was entitled to weekly wages, no. Forced laborers have to work without any wage or they will have to share their crops in some way. There is some way how the forced labor will happen but they would not get any remuneration back. The eldest son of the laborer was sent as the forced laborer. This statement is not necessarily correct. Forced labor is generally applied. So even this is wrong. The answer is option A for question number 13. Question number 14. Deification of the Buddha. Treading the path of Bodhisattvas, image worship and rituals. So we have three statements and they are asking which of the above is or are the feature or features of Mahayana Buddhism. So deification of Buddha, meaning Buddha himself being treated as a deity, as a god. Treading the path of Bodhisattva and image worship and rituals. All three are parts of Mahayana Buddhism. The answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. That is the final answer. We have come to the end of the discussion of ancient history questions asked in UPSC between 2015 and 2019. Please try to understand that through these questions there are certain ways in which we can approach the answers, there are certain um, techniques that can be used, sometimes you can eliminate them, sometimes you can associate one statement with some other detail thereby you will be able to uh, eliminate or include them. There are many ways to actually answer these questions. But what you should remember is for us to actually learn how to get proficient with this with answering these questions correctly, we have to train a lot, we have to practice a lot. So understand that it is by training, practicing for prelims only, it is going to help us get success in prelims. So with that, I would like to conclude this video. But remember, when you, when you have completed watching the video, please download the answer key with detailed explanations which is attached below in the same page below the video. And don't forget to subscribe because we will be uploading such videos here afterwards consistently, frequently on a weekly basis. Thank you.